is back. So. so happy to see you, Margaret. Praise the Lord. If you are able, please stand with us as we open with Heaven Came Down. sound good this morning all right looks like we have a prayer group tomorrow morning at 6 30 uh, here in the sanctuary uh, Cheryl is going to be in the room next to the pastor's office to help people get signed up for your COVID vaccination you had some last week as well so if you need any help with that That'll be just after church. right after church uh, the pastor would also like to meet with Sheila Penny Robin and Kurt he says for five minutes. I doubt that's true. It'd be a little bit longer than that. <laughs> Following the service, uh, that's the discipleship team. And then there's some note here at the bottom about the Cardinals signing a third baseman from Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> I will also be announcing what Azuna resigns, so just get ready for that. Uh, yes. Uh, Mobile market. 10 to 10.30 at the park. And we also will be starting our Thursday food ride again with two smiles out of Mount Vernon. So okay, that's a lot of information. I didn't... So Thursday... Monday 1st. Monday 1st. Monthly mobile park. Monthly mobile park at 10 to 10.30 at the park. Yes. Thursdays, Cusamanos will be coming back also at the park? Yes. All right. And they're usually there by 8 or 8.30. Okay, so that's an early one. All right. Anybody else got anything going this morning? Anybody behind me? No. Going once, going twice? All right. Brother Marvin? Thank you, God, for each and every one 
Amen. Thank you, Marvin. All right, let's sing just a closer walk with thee. Good to see you today, and what I like to see is there's a few people who are not in their regular seats, because those seats are taken up already, and let me tell you, that sometimes irritates church members, makes a pastor real happy, because that means somebody is there that's not normally there, and so we're, we're happy for you to be here wherever you might be seated uh, this morning. Our, our scripture today is going to be out of Exodus 19, and we're going to read lots of different parts of that chapter. Um, but this morning, we're going to start in verse 16 through 24 for this uh, initial reading. It says, On the third day, when morning came, there was thunder and lightning, a thick cloud on the mountain, and a very loud trumpet sound, so that all the people in the camp shuddered. Then Moses brought the people out of the camp to meet God, and they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was completely enveloped in smoke because the Lord came down on it in fire. Its smoke went up like the smoke of a furnace, and the whole mountain shook violently. As the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder, Moses spoke, and God answered him in the thunder. The Lord God came down on Mount Sinai at the top of the mountain. Then the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain, and he went up. The Lord directed Moses, go down and warn the people not to break through to see the Lord, otherwise many of them will die. Even the priests who came near the Lord must Consecrate themselves, or Lord will break out in anger against them. Moses responded to the Lord, The people cannot come up Mount Sinai, since you warned us. Put a boundary around the mountain and consecrate it. And the Lord replied to him, Go down and come back with Aaron. But the priests and the people must not break through to come up to the Lord, or he will break out in anger against them. So Moses went down to the people and told them. For our praise and worship song this morning. Robin's doing a solo. <laughs> Just 
Before we have Children's Church, um, I, first of all, Craig and I don't coordinate what the sermon's about with the songs he picks out, but it always amazes me how often the songs go right along um, with the message, and that, I think maybe God, God knows what I'm going to preach about, so he, he's the one who takes care of that. That always amazes me. But um, I, want, I want to give you a chance. What is something that you've experienced or seen and heard that has shown you that God is great? What's something, what's something that you'd like to share this morning? We just sang about how great God is. How have you seen that in your life and other people's lives or in things that you've witnessed? Anybody want to wanna begin? Marvin. Amen. Amen. You don't have to look outside the walls of your house, right? Freddie? Amen. Yeah. You are a walking... Greatness of God <laughs> on display. That is amazing because what you were facing three, four months ago or longer than that and where you are now, amazing. Anything else you want to share about that? Nope. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you for that witness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great minds think alike. <laughs> Anybody else? Yeah, Charlie. 
Amen. Amen. She, another walking miracle in our, um, in our midst. And uh, she says she's not walking too fast, but she's a walking miracle. <laughs> and uh, if, you'd, uh, if you'd have seen her a couple months ago, um, you would recognize what a great miracle that it is. She's come such a far way. Amen. And all the time, <laughs> God is good. Amen. Jerry. Amen. Amen. Yep. God's, when, when God's people love each other, that's, that is a great miracle. That is <coughs> wonderful, to, wonderful to see. Anybody else? All right. Well, look around. Look close enough today. I'll guarantee you, you'll see something that tells you how great God is. Um, something will show it to you. If you just open up your eyes and open up your ears and pay attention, you'll see the greatness of God. All right, all kids want to come down for Children's Church? All right, did you fill it up? All right. Uh-oh, we got some new goodies in here. All right, and we got a good group of kids today. So glad to see you. Are some of you going back to school full time soon? Maybe, maybe. Uh, I know four days away. Four days. Whoa. Okay. 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 Well, that's awesome. That's awesome. Well, who has not pulled something out of the bag yet? Raise your hand if you haven't. You haven't done it yet. Okay. You want to do it? Okay. All right. <laughs> what is this? That's a, that's a llama? I'm glad you said that because I was going to say something totally different. Um, oh, what is it? It's an alpaca. All right. That is an alpaca. Now, what do alpacas do? Are they the ones that can, they can spit out of their mouth? Is that the ones? Oh, yeah. 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 When you hurt them. When you hurt them? When you hurt them? Okay, well, let's not do that. Let's not hurt them. Um, okay. <laughs> I, I mean, thank you. I was, I was hoping you didn't notice. Um, that is actually my...
Thank you, ladies, for that beautiful song. Isn't it great to think about where God has brought us from and what we could have been if he hadn't have been working in our lives. Those kids really taught us something, though, there for just a second. I don't think I taught them anything, but <laughs> those kids taught us something just a moment ago when they said, I don't worry about anything. Now, why don't they worry? Well, part of it, it could be a lot of reasons for it, but part of it could be that, you know what? They know their parents got taken care of, right? They got their parents taking care of the things for them. You know what? We should be the same way. We've got a Heavenly Father who takes care of things for us. And we worry and we stress and we, we, we worry and st about so many things. And yet God says, just let me take care of it for you. So whatever you're worried about today, let God take care of it for you today. Put it in his hands. All right, turn with me to Exodus 19 if you have a Bible or you can look on the screen. Um, but you've probably seen pictures like this one that Kurt's going to put on the screen. Um, if you stare at this image long enough, I, I don't know if it works with the, with the projector or not, but if you stare at this image long enough to, for it to change your focus, there's a real image there behind that chaotic, random design you see there. But you've got to change your focus or all you're going to see is the random, chaotic design. You know, I feel like we have become singular focused in our society today. We see only ourselves. And we put humankind in our focus completely and God gets sort of put in the background as sort of something that puts out of our focus to the point where he is forgotten. And we think about only about who we are and forget completely about who God is. I want to change our focus today. And I want us to see God for who he really is. Because once we see God for who he really is, we're going to have a much clearer understanding of who we are. I guarantee you, if you think about it and you look just at yourself and you look at other people, you're going to think of something. But when you then bring God into the picture, everything changes. Everything changes about who I am when I think that God is the one who created me. Everything changes when I realize that God is the one who holds everything together in my life. When I realize that God has got things taken care of uh, for me. So what I want us to do, I want you to do with me is come with me to Mount Sinai this morning. And let's see, let's join Moses there as he meets with God. God had met with uh, Moses earlier at Mount Sinai or near Mount Sinai when God spoke to him through a burning bush. You remember that story? God called Moses to lead the people out of slavery in Egypt. He said, I want you to tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And Moses says, no, nah, I don't think that's such a good idea, God. I, I don't think I can do that. And, and when Moses objected, God said, this will be the sign to you that I sent you. When you bring the people out of Egypt, you will all worship God at this mountain. I always find that interesting that the sign that God is going to be with him, he's not going to see until after it happens. But God is making a promise to him and saying, here's what's going to happen. You're going to come a full circle and you're going to end up right back at this mountain and you are going to worship me. Your people are going to worship me. And that's where we find Moses and the Israelites today. They have been freed from slavery in Egypt. Uh, God has led them out of slavery. They've, uh, and they've come right here to Mount Sinai to worship God. The same way that Moses worshiped God uh, there many years before. Now, the first thing that we see should completely shock us. Now, it's not going to because we've gotten so used to it. It's almost like something that's ho-hum to us. But, folks, it should shock us. It should floor us. It should astound us. It should be almost unbelievable to us. We see here in Exodus 19, verse 9, that God wants to communicate with us. Now, nobody, nobody went, oh, or, sigh, or, or like thought that was crazy. I didn't see any reactions to anybody there. But think about that for a minute. God wants to communicate with us. Think about that for a minute. God wants to talk to you. Not some celebrity, not some movie star, not some politician, not some king or ruler on this earth. Almighty God wants to communicate with us. Look what it says in Exodus 19, verse 9. The Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear when I speak with you and will always believe you. God made an appointment. He set up an appointment to meet with Moses out at Mount Sinai so that he could talk with Moses 
And so that Moses' people could sort of eavesdrop on the conversation and hear what's going on. In all, we're going to see that Moses goes up and down this mountain at least six times. I can't imagine what that must have been like. Climbing a mountain one time would be difficult. He actually climbs this mountain and comes up and down about six times over, I think, a course of about 40 days, give or take a day or two. And, um, and, he, and he talks with God. Folks, mankind has always wanted to talk with God. We are wired that way, right? We are designed in such a way that we, we don't even realize it. We don't even quite identify it always. But something deep in us wants to talk with God. And we are not satisfied. We are not fulfilled until we talk with God. Unlike the rest of creation, we are endowed with the gift of speech. Not only the ability to hear language, but the ability to interpret language, the ability to understand language. And so we have seen people uh, go up to mountaintops in order to seek to hear from God. We've seen people practice meditation to hear from God. We've even seen people fast, go without food for, for days, weeks at a time, and force themselves into difficult living conditions so that they can hear from God. Let me tell you, you want to hear from God. You may not realize it. You may not even think that today, but I guarantee you, you are wired in such a way you want to hear from God. Hearing from God is a priceless treasure. And folks, that is a treasure that should never be taken lightly. And we should take our, our understanding of the importance of having these conversations with God by what God says about them. Look at Revelation 5 verse 8. It says, when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each had a harp, and get this, and they had golden bowls. Look what the golden bowls were filled with. Incense, which are the prayers of the saints. Let me put that in a different term. Golden bowls, which are the prayers of Freddie Siler. The prayers of Charlie Spence. The prayers of Linda Miller. Everybody in this room who knows Jesus Christ as their Savior and their Lord. Think about that. That's what Jesus Christ thinks of your prayers. That he doesn't just listen to them, but he stores them up. And he doesn't put them on a VHS tape that goes out of, that goes out of technology. Uh, or a DVR that eventually gets erased. No, he stores them up and puts them in bowls. And not wooden bowls, not bronze bowls, but he puts them in golden bowls. And he stores them up. That's what he thinks of you talking with him. Do we do that? Do we store up what God has said to us? Do we remember it? Do we treasure it the way God does? Think about it again. Almighty God, who, not, who, who hung the moon and stars in space, but also holds this world together with the principles of electromagnetism and a whole lot of other things that I don't understand, thinks that you are important enough to listen to. Folks, that should knock our socks off. That should blow our minds. And if, when it doesn't, it, it's because we're getting, again, distracted by lots of other things and not focusing in on who God is. God wants to talk with you. Now imagine for a minute a couple things, that this would never happen. But imagine if I went to Mark Zuckerberg's house. Anybody know who Mark Zuckerberg is? He's the inventor of Facebook and run, runs Facebook. Imagine I went to his house every morning. I think his is the one on the right. And, um, and I said to him, hey, you know, I'd just like to sit down and chat with you every day. What do you think his response would be? He'd say, who are you? How did you even get here? I don't want to talk to you today. I definitely don't want to talk to you tomorrow. I don't, I don't want you coming here every day chatting with me. Imagine if I did the same thing and showed up at Bill Gates' house every morning. His house is the one on the left there. And I said, I'd like to chat with you every morning. Um, Bill Gates would say, nah, I don't think so. I don't know who you are. I don't want to talk with you every morning. Now imagine I went to your house every morning. And I said, I want to chat with you every day. What would you say? Well, you'd be a little bit nicer. You'd say something like, hey, preacher, don't you have something else to do? Don't you have some other people you can go visit? Nobody wants to chat with me every morning. Nobody wants to do that. Only God wants to sit down and have a little talk with me every single morning. And folks, only God, God wants to sit down and chat with you every single morning. He does. 
He cares about you. He cares about what you have to say. He cares about what you feel, okay? You may not even be able to put it into words. I had a guy tell me one time, says, Preacher, I just don't know how to pray. I don't know how to put into words what I feel. And, you know, I, I didn't tell him this, but I think the best answer is just be silent before him and feel it before him. Let, uh, express whatever you can, but he knows what you're feeling. Just, just share it with him the best that you possibly can. Jeremiah 33, verse 3 says, The Lord who made the earth, the Lord who forms it to establish it, the Lord is his name, says this, Call to me, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and incomprehensible things you do not know. God wants you to call to him. And he says if you call to him, he will answer you, and ultimately, he will tell you incomprehensible things that you do not know. Now, that doesn't mean that every time you talk to God that you're going to hear some audible voice. I've been talking to God since... Uh, I was 15, 16 years old, every day of my life, and yet I've never heard God's audible voice. But I can tell you, as sure as I'm standing here, God has impressed things upon me. God has made very clear some things to me as I have talked with him. And so God wants to communicate with us. And I'm the first one to tell you that he will listen to your prayers anytime, any place. But God also wants us to prepare ourselves to come into his presence. Look with me, if you would, at verses 12 and 13 of, uh, of Exodus 19. Put boundaries for the people all around the mountain. So, so Moses is going up to the mountain to talk with God, okay? But this is what God says. Put boundaries for the people all around the mountain and say, be careful that you don't go up on the mountain or touch its base. Anyone who touches the mountain must be put to death. No hand may touch him. Instead, he will be stoned or shot with arrows and not live, whether animal or human. When the ram's horn sounds a long blast, they may go up the mountain. And then he says, uh, then Moses came down from the mountain to the people and consecrated them and they washed their clothes. He said to the people, be prepared by the third day. Do not have sexual relations with women. And so, these are sinful people, just like you and me. These are people filled with sin, and they are getting ready to come close into the presence of God. And God says, you better prepare them. Because they are not ready for my holiness. They are not ready for my greatness. They are not ready for my, my power. Without the blood of Jesus covering us, folks, if God came here and appeared to us in all of his full glory, we would all probably melt, okay? We would be, we would be uh, probably dissolve, okay? We couldn't handle the, the, the glory and the, and the greatness of his presence. And so he says these people need to be prepared. And they need to prepare their clothes. And they need to refrain from sexual activity to make sure that they were clean to come into the presence of God. And friends, we need to prepare our hearts to come into the presence of God. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not sure God's too concerned with the type of clothes that you wore today. I don't think that's what is going on here. But he does want us to prepare our heart to worship and listen to him. Not just on Sunday morning, but every day of the week. In fact, I had a guy in my church in DeSoto who he would, uh, if you asked him to do anything on Saturday night, he wouldn't do it. He said, no, I'm not going to, he wouldn't go to Cardinal games, he said, on Saturday night because he'd get in too late. Because he said, I want to prepare myself to worship God. Now, I'm not saying whether that's right or wrong or whatever, but I did like the attitude of his heart that he wanted to be prepared when he came in to worship God. And we are forgiven by the blood of the Lamb, but we need to recognize how much our own personal sin corrupts our heart and our mind, making it difficult for us to hear from God. All during the week, we get filled with lots of different things that corrupt our heart and corrupt our mind. And we've got to kind of pull away from that for a little bit and prepare ourselves to hear from God. How prepared is your heart each day to experience the presence of God? How prepared is it? We have to, I think, intentionally prepare our minds and our heart to be receptive to God's words. God's words that we read in the Bible, God's words that we hear from other people. I think God can use other people to bring messages to us. I've had that before. Somebody comes up to me and says something, and I'm like, who told you to say that? Because it was exactly what I've been praying about that morning or thinking about. And, um, and God used somebody to deliver a message to me. But we have to be intentional to be listening for that. Even messages that he gives us through the daily events of our life. I've had things like that happen where praying about something and something happens. And I'm like, okay, that was God. That was God that brought that into my life. But we have to intentionally prepare our minds because the world 
is designed to muffle, distort, or distract us from God's message. Did you get that? Almost everything in the world, its purpose is to distract us from what God is trying to tell us. And we've got to work hard at making sure that God's message gets through. Um, I, I listen sometimes uh, to an AM radio station. I know, I'm a nerd, okay? But um, it goes way back um, when I was delivering newspapers. My dad and I would drive in from, um, from the country, and we would listen to X Radio out of St. Louis. It's a sports station, a news station, politics, all that stuff. Well, I still listen to it today, but it seems like so often there's static when I'm trying to hear something. Just when, just when I'm, I'm hearing an interview and you're interviewing someone, I want to hear about their life, I want to hear what they have to say, I go through a town, and some towns it just, I don't know what it is about their power lines or something, but it just cuts out the, the, um, the airwaves. And all I hear is, <laughs> and I start yelling um, at the radio. Folks, there's really too much static in our life, isn't there? Way too much static in our life. Some of the static, it just, we can't avoid it, all right? But some of it we create for ourselves. We just add to it. And we make it so much harder for God to get his message to us. And, and you know what? There's just an amount of static that we need to get rid of so that we can hear from God. Now, I'm not even just talking about sinful things. You know, there's sinful things that are keeping you from God. You know what those are. You know you need to repent of those things. But sometimes it isn't even just sinful things. Sometimes it's just prioritizing the good things that you're doing. Because even some good things keep you from hearing God. You remember the story of when Jesus went to Mary and Martha's house? What was Martha doing? She was doing a good thing. I don't know how you can do much better. She was cooking for Jesus, right? I can see that being put on t-shirts, you know, cooking for Jesus. And, and, and she's working hard, and she sees her sister Mary just sitting there doing nothing. She's just sitting there talking to Jesus. And she complains and says, Jesus, why, are you let, why isn't she helping me? And Jesus gives a surprising answer. She sa he says, Martha, Martha, you're worried about so many things. But only one thing's important. It's talking to Jesus. It's talking to God. Now again, nothing wrong with cooking. In about 45 minutes, I'm going to really hope somebody's doing some cooking. <laughs> nothing wrong with cooking. But she needed to prioritize hearing Jesus. And friends, there's a lot of things I think that you're doing. And there's nothing wrong with what you're doing. But you need to prioritize hearing Jesus above all those things. And Chris Hottinson, there's some things that you're doing, and you know, nothing wrong you're doing, but you need to prioritize hearing Jesus above those things. Well, God's a God who wants to communicate with us. God's a God who wants us to prepare our hearts to hear him. God's also a God who must be approached on his terms. Uh, he's always ready to listen, but we approach him on his terms and not our own. Look with me, if you would, at verses um, 12 through 13, and then we're going to skip down to 20 through 24. Put boundaries for the people all around the mountain and say, Be careful that you don't go up on the mountain or touch its base. Anyone who touches the mountain must be put to death. No hand may touch him. Instead, he will be stoned or shot with arrows and not live. Um, and we'll go on down to verse 20. The Lord came down on Mount Sinai at the top of the mountain. Then the Lord summoned Moses to the top of the mountain and he went up. The Lord directed Moses, Go down and warn these people not to break through to see the Lord. Otherwise, many of them will die. Even the priests who come near the Lord must consecrate themselves or the Lord will break out in anger against them. And then he kind of says the same thing um, in a little bit different way in verses 23 and 24. God tells Moses, I want you to put boundaries around Mount Sinai so the people wouldn't come too close. Now, that almost sounds weird to us. Why wouldn't God want the people to come as close as they could to him, right? Well, the punishment for going beyond the boundaries and touching the mountain was pretty severe. It was death, right? What's going on here? Well, while the people stayed at the bottom of the mountain, Moses went to the top of the mountain where he met with God. And God tells him to bring up Aaron with him. Here's what is happening here. God's people have always needed a mediator to be with God. Because of our sin, because we are sinful people, we do good things, but we do an awful lot of bad things. And because of that sin, that puts a big wedge between us and the holiness of God. And we've always needed a mediator. 
And that's what Moses and Aaron was for them. And we'll see later where Aaron and the priests continued to be mediators for people in the tabernacle. And we'll see Aaron will go in and preparations had to be made. Sacrifice had to be made before the priests could come into the presence of God while the people would keep their distance outside the tabernacle just like they did at Mount Sinai. And I'm going to put a little advertising plug in here. We're going to begin a study uh, February 14th on Sunday night on the tabernacle. Okay, it's going to be about a 12-week study. I encourage you to get involved in that. This is going to be, I've been working on this during the COVID time, um, and I, I encourage you to come because I think it's going to really open up um, the Bible to you. Open up a lot of the Old Testament and show how the Old Testament and New Testament kind of flow together and work together. And uh, so I encourage you to, to put that on your, on your calendar. But here's the good news I want to give you. The good news is we don't need Moses and Aaron to be our mediator anymore. The good news is we have a new mediator. We have a, a new high priest who doesn't have to keep making sacrifices to enter the presence of God for us. But Jesus made a once and for all sacrifice when he hung on the cross for you and for me. When he died on that cross, he became all of the bulls, all of the lambs, all of the goats, all of that. He took it, all of our sins, upon himself, and he never has to go up there on that, again, uh, on that cross again. In fact, it says in Matthew 17, we see Jesus on a mountain again with Moses and Elijah. And the disciples witness Jesus' full glory on this mountain. And just as Moses did on Mount Sinai, the disciples hear God. And this is what it says. Suddenly a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. God is saying, Moses is not your mediator anymore. Elijah is not your mediator anymore. Jesus is. And because of that, we can go boldly into the presence of God. We can come boldly into his presence. Um, he, he doesn't go into the presence of God for us anymore. We go with him. We are led by Jesus right into the Holy of Holies, that part of that tent that you see. There's two parts of it. The second part is the Holy of Holies where God would dwell. Folks, we get to do that every day when we pray, when we talk with God. We are led right into the Holy of Holies to be with God ourselves, and he leads us with a trail of his own blood and not the, the blood of cows and bulls and lambs and goats. Folks, we've probably heard that many times before, but I hope you don't miss the significance of that. That God, that Jesus has, is our mediator and that we can come boldly before the throne of God every single day. All right, a few more things I want to share and then we'll close. Three days after God gave instructions to Moses, we see in verse 16 that the morning begins with lightning and thunder. A thick cloud envelops the mountain and people hear a trumpet that makes the whole camp shudder. All right, so you've you got thunder, you've got lightning, you've got this thick cloud, you've got a trumpet that sounds. And when God came down, it says the top of the mountain was on fire. All right. In fact, the place where they believe Mount Sinai to be, it just happens to have a black. It has to be happens to be black at the top, as if the mountain had been scorched at one time. I'll leave that with the archaeologists and all that. But um, and then the entire mountain shook like it was an earthquake, and the the trumpet sound continued growing louder and louder until Moses opened his mouth to speak, and God answered. So you got lightning. Thunder, thick cloud, uh, trumpet sounding. You have a surreal scene that demonstrates the greatness, the glory, the power, and the authority of God and all of his majesty. And that day the Israelites saw, they heard all the awesomeness of God. I'd love to have been there that day. Wouldn't you love to have seen that and witnessed that scene? Witnessed all of those manifestations of God's glory? Well, I would love to be there, but someday I think I will see the following scene. Listen to this from the book of Revelation. There was a throne in heaven and someone was seated on it. The one seated there had the appearance of jasper and carnelian stone. A rainbow that had the appearance of an emerald uh, surrounds the throne. Around the throne were 24 thrones 
And on the throne sat 24 elders dressed in white clothes with golden crowns on their heads. Flashes of lightning and rumblings of thunder came from the throne. Sound a little familiar? Almost a similar type, type scene. Here's the message I want us to get this morning. In between the thunder on Mount Sinai and the thunder we will experience in heaven. Get this if you get nothing else this morning. In between both of those incredible scenes, the awesomeness, the power, the glory, and the majesty of God has remained constant every day between those two times. It doesn't change, folks. The God's awesomeness, when you're by yourself at 2 o'clock in the morning and you can't sleep and you can't, you feel lonely and you feel by yourself, God is just as awesome then as he was with Moses on Mount Sinai. His power is just as great. And guess what? He wants to talk with you just as much then as he did with Moses on Mount Sinai. And just as much as he will one day in heaven. And yet, life has a way of making us think completely the opposite. Most days, we get out of bed, we get ready, we eat breakfast, we go to work, come home, eat supper, watch a little TV, go to bed, and we think to ourselves, boy, nothing big happened today. Nothing significant happened today. And what do we do? We forget all about God. We forget about the awesomeness of God, even though God was just as awesome that day as he was when he came down on Mount Sinai in lightnings and thunder and a cloud and fire. Folks, God is just as great, just as awesome, and just as glorious when the mountain is quiet. God is just as great, just as awesome, just as glorious when you're having when you need the miracle, as he is when you get the miracle. God doesn't change. God never changed. It reminds me of when God spoke to Elijah and, um, on the mountain, and Elijah felt an earthquake and saw a wind shattering cliffs and, and felt a, experienced a fire. But God wasn't in any of those things. And then he's in the cave, and he hears a soft whisper and he comes out, and that's when he hears God's voice. Not in the fire, not in the wind, not in the earthquake, but in that soft whisper. Friends, if we are going to grow deeper in our relationship with Christ, we need to recognize the awesomeness of God in every day, in every moment of our life. I should not need a mountaintop experience to experience the awesomeness of God. Through faith, I need to recognize that wherever I am, whatever is happening to me, that God's power and His glory is all around me. And it is still the same as it was back years ago. Every time I pray, every time I read His Word, every time I have the privilege of serving Him by reaching out to someone in need, I should be amazed by His presence, I should be floored by His message to me, and I should be astounded by being able to be His hand. And feet. Think about that. When you reach out to somebody and you give something to someone and you serve someone in Jesus' name, what you are doing is you are being Almighty God's hands and feet. You are doing what God wants to do and He chooses to do it through you. Folks, that is amazing. That is amazing. And I, I take it for granted way too often. I should never take it for granted. And you shouldn't take it for granted that we get to be the hands and feet of God. Wrap up here in just a moment. In September of 1996, I went out the back door of the house where I was and the air was still and calm. As still and calm as I've ever known it. Like, like pretty much any other still and calm night. But above me was the eye of a hurricane. Hurricane Fran, in fact. Now, a few minutes before, the winds had been blowing at over 70 miles per hour. I was living near Raleigh, North Carolina at the time, and they had been blowing at over 70 miles per hour. A few minutes later, the winds picked up again and uprooted almost every tree in our backyard, actually pinning one of our dogs underneath it at the time. The dog was okay uh, later. But uh, the hurric what I want you to see here is that hurricane was just as strong when the winds weren't blowing. 
The only thing that had changed was my experience of the hurricane. Right? When I stood out there and I was in the, underneath the eye of the hurricane, it just felt like there was no power. There was no force around me. It felt like I could have stayed out there for a couple hours. And yet the hurricane hadn't changed a bit. It was just the way I was experiencing it. And folks, maybe you can't see God today. Maybe you're going through something today and you're just like, I just don't see God in my life. Maybe you can't hear him today because of, of what you're dealing with. Maybe you can't feel God in your life because of circumstances. Let me assure you, he is with you today. He is with you today and he is just as great in your life as he was in Moses' life when he came to him in fire and smoke and thunder and lightning. He is just as great. And folks, what we need to do is we need to begin allowing ourselves to live our lives in the awesomeness of God. And, and what I mean by that is, is that no matter what's going on around us, that we have enough faith in God to recognize that He is who He is and that He doesn't change. And that we recognize the same God who, who said, let there be light, and we see all this come into come into being. The same God who brought down fire on Mount Sinai. The same, uh, the same God who uh, parted the waters of the Red Sea and did all these incredible miracles it is the same powerful God who visits with you when you're all by yourself and you're looking at your bills and you got more bills than you got money and you got more, more um, doctor's diagnosis than you got faith and you got more of everything than you need of other things. Folks, God is just as awesome right then. He is just as powerful. And we need to trust in that and believe in it. Because it's one thing to believe and trust in God when you're on the mountain and you're seeing God bringing down thunder and lightning. It's a whole other thing when you're in the valley. To trust and believe in God. But what has changed from being on the mountain and in the valley? Has God changed? No. You've just changed where you're at. But God hasn't changed who he is. And so that's the encouragement I give you. I'll bet there's a few people in here today that you're about at wit's end. You're tired of this year. Two years. You're tired of just going through things. and You don't have answers for them. Believe and hold on to the awesomeness of God. Because it's there. He is still. He is still the God who walks on water. He is still the God who moves mountains. He is still the God who makes blind people see and makes people who are dead live and makes people who need a miracle. He is still a God who brings a miracle. Put your faith and trust in his awesomeness today. Let's bow our heads in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, God, we thank you today for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for your greatness. And Lord, it seems sometimes that life and the mundaneness of life make us think sort of sort of bring us to the point where we believe that you're not really who you say you are that you're not the great and powerful God that you say and yet Lord you haven't changed you are who you are and you never will change and now one day one day we will come face to face with you in heaven and Lord, I have a picture in my, eye, my mind of what that might look like, what you might look like, and yet I know that day when I come face to face with you, it will be more than I have ever imagined or could dream. And yet, you are with me every day. And you, are, you, you go with me when I leave here. You're with me when I stand here at this church. You're with me when I drive in my car. Everywhere I go, you are with me, and you are with these people, Lord. And so, God, I just pray that somehow, some way, we might carry an understanding of your awesomeness with us wherever we go. Like the song says, God, you are an awesome God. Thank you, Jesus. I ask these things in your name. Amen. We stand for the Savior and Lord. <laughs>
them play one more verse, but just, just talk to Jesus right now. And If you need God's awesomeness in your life right now, if you need God's power in your life, would you just tell Him, Lord Jesus, I believe in You, but I need help believing in You more. And just ask Him, just ask Him to show you how great He is and how mighty He is. What is it that you need to turn over to Him right now? Would you talk to Him? Would you give that worry, that thing that you've not been able to say that God can take care of that, would you turn it over to God right now? Let His awesomeness and power and majesty take care of it. seated. 